strategy guide for an action-packed three-star attack strategy calls for an action-packed intro. Now this attack strategy is not the kind of thing I would use to take out any base, but it is the kind I would use for pushing if your heroes are already maxed, and it is the kind that I would use on base designs with certain flaws that we're going to get into here. Now these are the two flaws you want to look for. One, either the CC troops are troops that you know your Valkyries can kill on a cleanup attack, such as witches, Valkyries, a whole lot of archers, goblins, stuff like that, then you don't even need to lure the CC troops. But if it's some if it's a CC, you don't know what's in there, you're wanna, gonna wanna play it safe, lure it with either 20 to 30 troops right off the bat, or even less if you can, or with a short queen walk. You wanna have the CC troops coming out of the CC over to your queen within the first 30 seconds. The next thing is a lot of value via heroes and high value defenses such as the artillery, infernos, expos, bomb towers, stuff like that. And the idea is you have your Valks come in, clear the compartment, and then there is just a thin path for your flanking wizards with the P.E.K.K.A. to come and take out the one edge with your queen walk to clear the other side while the Valkyries push through finishing the base. Now it's a pretty simple strategy. What we're going to be doing first is luring the CC troops. If you can, if you can lure them right off the bat, then go ahead and do it. If not, you're going to start the queen walk and then lure the CC troops as soon as you possibly can. Now, while you're killing the CC, or once you know that your queen is going to be able to coast for a little bit, you're going to drop your siege barracks on the other side. And the siege barracks is going to create the other side of the funnel, along with your barbarian king. And then after that, you're simply going to drop the Valkyries with your Warden ability, and you're going to use your Warden ability right before you use your first Rage, okay? And then after that, you're going to drop whatever cleanup troops you have on the back end. Sounds simple, right? Well, it is, only this is all going to happen very quickly once you drop your Valkyries, because anyone who knows anything about Valkyries knows they are very fast and very hard to keep track of but you'll don't worry you'll get used to it so this is what your army is going to look like most of the time you don't actually need to bring a whole lot of funneling troops since the siege barracks and the queen are going to be able to do most of that you just want to bring some troops to make sure the queen goes outside you may need a couple troops just to finish the funnel but most of the time you won't need to if you can get away with using just four healers i would go ahead and do that but most of the time you'll probably need five especially if you need a short queen walk in order to lure the cc and you're going to be under some fire now as far as the valkyries i do recommend bringing at least 14 uh, in this video, I'm gonna have at least I'm gonna have 18 and 21 in my raids because I like to go heavy on those. But if you do want to bring some back end troop, that can be useful. But that's not what I'm gonna be focusing on in this particular video. And of course, the heal spell I usually like to bring two, especially if you are bringing back end hogs. You can use one on the hogs. It's usually a good use for that i always recommend bringing the poison as well though a lot of people do get away with not bringing a poison and just using a valkyrie to help the cc kill the problem with that is sometimes the healers will, sw will switch onto the valkyrie which can be devastating to your attack now the main thing i need people to understand when using this powerful strategy is that it's not good on every base but when you look at this base you have an enormous compartment with a whole lot of buildings really close together, okay? For this reason, I like to call the Valkyrie the Electro Dragon of ground troops. Because like the Electro Dragon, it does really well when you see a bunch of buildings that are super close together, especially when you have huge compartments with a lot of value. Now, if you look at the center compartment there, there aren't actually any defenses in there. If there was an Eagle Artillery or even just a Tesla farm, I might even be less inclined to use this strategy. But when you have a massive compartment like that, it makes this strategy one of the most effective and safe ways to take it out. So another thing that makes this strategy very easy is the fact that the CC is very easy to lure. All I have to do is drop some hogs over there. I get the bonus, which is uh, pre-triggering a giant bomb, which the Valkyries certainly don't like, and I get all the troops out of there. And it happens to be ice golems, which is kind of convenient because it allows me to just kind of leave the queen to do her thing while 
making the funnel on the other side. Now, the way I use the siege barracks is important here. I don't just drop the siege barracks, okay? Here's what you do. Now, it's two ice golems and there's no damage on the queen, so I know she's gonna be perfectly fine. I go over here, I drop my siege barrack. Now, I don't just drop it, I'm gonna wait and I'm going to see which direction the P.E.K.K.A. goes. This technique, by the way, is useful for a lot of attacks, not just this attack, okay? It's also, so here's what you do. You wait to see which direction the P.E.K.K.A. goes and then you drop the king so that he goes in the opposite direction. That way, whichever direction the wizards go, there is going to be tanking for them. This base isn't pr really a particularly good example because they end up going to the mill and getting shot down. But anyways, my Valkyries are down, and here's where the Warden's ability comes in. So now the freeze frame is important, and this is where this is the part where you're going to make or break your attack, okay? The way you use in your Warden ability with the Valkyries is much different than many other troops because unlike Miners and Hogs and Loons, the Warden cannot keep up with the Valkyries, okay? So what I've done here is I've seen that the Valkyries end up stuck on the wall. That is why I'm able to drop the Rage before I Warden ability. Most of the time, especially if you have a jump place for them, you're going to Warden and then Rage. Now. Since there is a high hit point structure there, the Eagle Artillery, I put the heal there as well because even with the Rage, I know the Valkyries are going to stay in that area long enough to get enough value from that heal. But anyways, after this, it's just a matter of following your Valkyries, seeing where they go, and then dropping a heal for them. Find the biggest group of the Valkyries, which for me was arguably on the top where I put my heal to keep them alive, though it may have been better on the bottom, but this is an extremely hectic attack. It's not gonna be perfect every time, but frankly, on a base like this, it doesn't have to be. There's so much value in that one compartment and it is gone. All I need now is for my queen to walk around the side. And even if my queen doesn't make it, my siege barrack is still on the flank on the other side. Okay, but as you can see, my queen is doing just fine over there. She's tanking some defenses, which is good for the Vox. My king and my P.E.K.K.A. are still alive on the bottom. There are some wizards over there, and I still have some cleanup troops as well. Do I have cleanup troops? No, I don't. I'm talking out of my ass here. But anyways, uh, my troops are making their way just fine through the top there. And my queen is doing her job, which is to tank, keep the flank... Uh, clear so that the Valks stay inside and do their thing and she is actually being smart and coming around that wall there but the point is on a base like this with a whole lot of value in one massive compartment this strategy is a very safe way to take that out just as you've seen here in this attack against this base with a very large compartment and yeah by the way the two swag spells as well as all the troops that are still alive very comfortably done now this second base design has a similar flaw okay now if you were to hit this with queen walk miners it would be just about as difficult as any base with open wall compartments but the cc is easy to lure so i go ahead and i use five hogs 25 troop space to lure the cc worth it i only have four uh healers on this queen which is good I drop the poison and it's some witches and a dragon, which is a nightmare if you don't have the poison. So by all means, bring the poison because if you run into this without a poison, you're in trouble. Unless of course you can use that a Valkyrie there. But anyways, same thing. My queen's coasting. I go over to the other side. I drop my siege barrack and this is a better example of how to better use the siege barrack along with your king. And I wait to see which direction my P.E.K.K.A. is going. And once I know my peck is going inside, I send my king outside so that the wizards coming out have some tanking. And these wizards are going to get a lot of value in this raid. But anyways, a whole bunch of them are going inside. Eventually, a big group of them are going to go outside. And almost all of them are actually going to survive this raid. But I drop my Valkyries. I leave a path for them into the middle. I drop the jump. And right before I drop the rage, I hit the Warden's ability, which is exactly how you should be using this. I have two, rate, two uh, heal spells. One I'm going to use in the middle for the idiot Valkyries that break through the wall there. And the other I'm going to use for the Valkyries that go up top. And these are not perfect spell placements. But keep in mind, this attack is extremely fast. And those girls move very quickly. For those of you who are not used to using Valkyries, 
which is probably a lot of you, given this attack is really not meta. Though I would argue that when you see a base like this. So I see two splash damage uh, buildings together. I go ahead and freeze that. And as you can see, I've taken this base out. And by the way, this was with about a minute and 20 seconds to spare. It was an absolute annihilation of this very badly flawed base. So remember the moral of this story is this attack strategy does not work against every base comfortably. Don't get me wrong, it can work on any base, but you want to look for these two flaws and when you see them, when you see a glaring example of them, that is when you are going to whip this one out and impress all your clan mates. So given how specific the flaws were, you'd think that you wouldn't be able to use this strategy a lot, but I do use this pretty often, so definitely look forward to more Falcon guides from me. If you liked this, if you're going to give it a try, leave me a like. If you want to see more guides like this on meta strategies, as well as strategies that most other YouTubers are not covering, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my content.